Hi, I'm going to show you how to relate Gibbs Free Energy and the Standard Reduction Potential. Um, so this is your Delta G with your E naught. And here's the beauty of this. Uh, this formula right here, it re honestly really relates thermodynamics, so the idea of work, with electrochemistry. And electrochemistry um, is changing a chemical potential to an electrical uh, potential. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, so we can bring, bring these together. Now here are the two huge takeaways on this. And so significant, just by knowing signs, um, you can make some really big predictions. Um, so a system is going to be spontaneous when delta G is negative, so energy available to do work. The potential is positive because that will um, move electrons by itself without outside intervention when K is greater than one and it's product favored. So if you just know the sign of E, you can predict everything else on that system. Pretty neat. Now, a non-spontaneous scenario, of course, is going to be positive delta G. This requires energy to do work. Negative E, so a negative potential, it means that we're, um, we have to force and move the electrons back up a potential. Uh, so ultimately, it will require energy. K is less than one, which means it's reactant favored. So those are your um, two big takeaways of combining these really big principles of thermodynamics, equilibrium, and electrochemistry. Pretty powerful. So here we have this formula. Um, delta G equals a negative NFE. Now notice this. When E is positive, okay, if E is positive, you multiply this through, you'll get a negative. Okay, positive times negative will give you the negative delta G, which means positive E is spontaneous because um, delta G will be negative and that is spontaneous. So there's a confirmation of this fact right here in this formula. Let's label everything. So G, this is going to be Gibbs free energy. And your unit on this, um, when you multiply from these units, you will see is joules per mole. Now be careful on this, it's joules. So if you're asked to report this in kilojoules, you're going to have to uh, multiply that, or excuse me, divide that by a thousand to get it to kilojoules. So when you multiply from these units, it gives you joules. I'll show you the units. Um, and be super careful, I'm going to put a star on this. This is the um, moles of electrons gained or lost. Okay, gained or lost. Um, so in this reaction, you're going to see that we lose two electrons, we gain two electrons. I don't add that together, it's not four. You lose two electrons, and those are the same two electrons that are gained. So there's a total transfer of two electrons. I could put here moles of electrons transferred. Two total electrons will be transferred. F is Faraday's constant. Um, and this really honestly should be giving to you 96,000, excuse me, 485, 485 coulombs per mole of electron. So if we have one mole of electrons, 6.022 times 10 to the 23, uh, one mole of electrons, that total charge on that mole of electrons, wow, 96,485 coulombs. Remember, coulomb is just a unit for charge. And then E, of course, this is going to be, oh, and I'm sorry, this should have been a knot on both of those. We're going to do this at standard conditions. Um, this is going to be the standard reduction potential for a cell. Okay, a standard reduction potential for a cell. So often, this is how the problem will be given. You'll be given two half react, or even a set of half reactions, and you have to determine which two half reactions come together to make a, a voltaic cell, so a positive E. So you find your two half reactions, you have to balance that, calculate E. Now, if you don't know how to balance half reactions, you don't know how to balance E, go to my playlist, uh, Redox Electrochemistry, watch both of those videos. Um, and then from there, it will say what's the value of G. So you have to balance the half reactions, calculate E, and then plug it into this formula. Um, I've saved us some steps. Here is our example problem. Um, we're going to have hydrogen with zinc. So this is um, our standard uh, hydrogen electrode. Um, and when we do hydrogen with zinc, it gives us a negative 0.76. So right away, I don't have to do anything else and I can answer this. Seeing that that's negative, non-spontaneous, I can tell you straight out, Delta G is going to be positive, non-spontaneous, 
the um, equilibrium is going to be less than one, K is less than one, and is going to be reactant favored. So just seeing this, I, I know a lot of information. And those are really, really good multiple choice thought questions. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug this in. Let's find our delta G. So delta G is going to equal, all right, the number of moles. Let me confirm this for you. Hydrogen is going from a zero to a plus one. So zero to a plus one. We are, I'm at perfect zero, and now I'm a plus one. We've lost an electron. Um, so if I've lost an electron, um, I'm down by one, okay? Down by one, that is going to lose one electron, um, but I've got two hydrogens. We always do oxidation numbers for one atom. So one hydrogen loses one electron, two hydrogens. This is going to be two hydrogens equals two electrons, two total electrons. Notice zinc, I'm down by two, and now I'm at a perfect zero. This is going to gain electrons, that will be reduced. Um, so what's my total transfer of electrons? Two. So N is going to be two. We're going to have two moles of the electrons. And then we have Faraday's constant, 96,485 coulombs per mole of electron times my E naught is negative 0 0.076 volts. There we have it. So take, check out units with me, mole times mole. And then you are going to love this. A joule equals a coulomb. Well, let me write it in our usual way. A volt times a coulomb. There it is. Volt times coulomb equals joule. Nice. So when we multiply this, delta G is going to equal, it was 14,000. Got to see where I wrote that down. So sorry. It was four. Oh, maybe I just did it on my calculator. Sorry. Here it is. Um, 146,000. 657. Okay, I'll write all of it down. I haven't done sig figs yet. What's the unit? Joules. That is going to be our joules. So to convert this to kilojoules, we will just take a thousand joules and one kilojoule, and that will give us, let's see, I had two sig figs here, so we'll do this to two sig figs, um, 150 kilojoules, 150 kilojoules. And this would be per mole of reaction. Okay, this would be per mole of this overall great big reaction right here, that this bolt would actually have mole of reaction underneath it. So that's where the mole of reaction would come in right there. Okay, 150. So the formula itself, easy. Make sure you know these connections and those principles. Um, this is usually an extension question. Make sure that you know how to add half reactions, calculate E, and then this part, easy peasy. Okay, good work, kind of neat. Relating thermodynamics, electrochemistry, and equilibrium means you're at a good spot in your chemistry class. Good work, have a great day, thanks.